personnel stuff first. Um, who's who's not going to play in the bowl game? Out of the, like the ones we know, we know Gould and, and Tolly and the guys that are in the transfer portal. Who else? Sure. Who else wouldn't play? Um, Josh Gray is out with a uh, injury, um, and Damian Martinez. Um, I think that's still pending. I'm not sure. I don't expect him to play. Um, oh, now he's he, you're not expecting him to play. Yeah, I just think it's a matter of him just the shape of it. I'm, I'm just you know we got to see what kind of shape he's in. He took a little bit of time off, um, so we'll see. What about uh, Jaden Robinson? Jaden's playing. Yeah. And Noble Thomas. Noble's out there. Yeah, practice today. So. Okay. Silas as well. I'm assuming. Silas. Yeah, practice today. Yeah. That sounds like. With, with with in regard to Ben, um, it's just like getting on the bike again for him, or how? What's the transition like for him? Yeah, it's been good. I mean, he's getting more reps. Um, you know, Ben's a good player. The guy's played a lot of football. It's just a matter of him just getting back in the flow of it. Um, but he's been fine. It's been a pretty easy transition. How do you how do you work out the uh, the backup quarterback? How do you uh, just that one getting, out getting reps? We'll see. We'll kind of make a decision once we get closer to game time. But we still got a lot of time. We still got a couple of weeks of practice still. Um, but, but yeah, that'll sort itself out. What's what's the uh, what's the bowl schedule in terms of you practicing through Friday or Saturday this week? Yeah, so we'll, we'll go uh, kind of like a regular game week. So we'll go Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, which would be our normal Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday rhythm. Um, guys will go home, get a little time, uh, then we'll rally back in Texas on Christmas, and then go Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then we play Friday. So 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 they won't all be leaving from here. They'll just everybody no, gets no, there they'll rally Christmas. from yeah. We'll fly them in from where they're at. Um, and then we'll have some guys that are here that'll that'll fly over with the yeah. with the group. How much different does Notre Dame? You feel like Notre Dame is going to look without their quarterback and running back? Um, I mean they they got good players that are backing those guys up the same way we feel good about our guys that are backing our guys up that, that opted out or transferred or whatever. So I'm sure you know as coaches we just we don't coach who we who we have. So um, I'm sure their mindset is the next guys up. And um, so I don't expect it to look too different. Uh, inside linebacker, where, where, where do you go with there with, with uh, Easton not here? And what? Yeah, um, Isaiah Chisholm is playing a lot more. Uh, Melvin Jordan is playing. Those two young guys are going to get opportunity. Uh, we're excited about them. I, again, I just think during bowls, during this type of year, um, there's always going to be some guys that get more opportunities that are going to be better for that, uh, that are going to be surprises to everybody. Not necessarily to themselves because they, they all have the confidence and know they can do it. But again, when you're playing behind a, a, a veteran guy, you, you're just not going to get those opportunities. Yeah. Now they're getting them. So who, who are some of the young guys that are, that are going to get some opportunities in this game that maybe we haven't seen a lot of this yeah. season? Uh, and maybe not necessarily young guys, but I think of a guy like Jack Kane who got started playing a lot more towards the end of the year. I mean, he's going to play a, a lot more. Um, I mentioned Chisholm and Melvin. Uh, John Miller is a guy who redshirted this year, but because of the rules, is, can play in this bowl game. Uh, Jimmy Valson is a guy that came in and made a lot of plays for us as a receiver with limited opportunities. He's going to have a lot more on his plate. Um, I think there, there's there's quite a few guys. Jacob Strand at left tackle, uh, Tyler Morano at right tackle. Um, there, there's probably guys at every position, but those guys kind of jump out to me. Will, will Stark play one of, one of the he'll play the left guard? Right now, that's what we're thinking. Yeah, with some flexibility depending on how it shakes out. Could he could he play tackle or? I think he has played tackle. Yeah. What are you looking from some of these guys, younger or not, you know, in, in this bowl game when they have this type of opportunity to be able to show maybe what they can bring to the table heading into next season? Yeah, I just think just like anybody else, you just want uh, guys to make the most of their opportunities. There's going to be a learning curve there. Uh, we're playing against a really good team. You know, they, they got a vote too. They're going to win some reps. Uh, but I just think as a player, any player, whether you're a six-year senior or a freshman, you know, your expectation is to go out there and do well. And when you're on the field, the expectation doesn't change, the standard doesn't change. So um, we're expecting those guys to, to play like starters if they are starters. And if they get an opportunity to get on the field, to execute. You talked about a couple weeks ago how, you know, you love doing this, right? It doesn't matter until it basically kills you, you will do this, even through all the basically uncertainty that comes with this kind of off season. But What's it been like for you, especially in the last couple of weeks? You know, you lose Childs, you lose Easton, you lose Achille, and then now all of a sudden you're having to figure out, again, that kind of next man up. And how do you kind of game plan for a situation where, you know, at one, one week to the next, you may not know technically who's on the roster preparing for this game? Um, well, I think we've gotten to the point now where we, where we do know who's on the roster. Um, 
But I just think it's the next man up mentality. I just think this is the way you have to go about it as a coach. I mean, football is different from every other sport because you have to assume injury. Like, that's just part of it. And so I'm, we're always thinking that way. And you don't have time to mourn that. The next guy's got to be ready uh, because at the end of the day, we got a job to do. And so I, I don't think about, and I don't mean to say this in a callous manner because I love those guys, but they're not here anymore. So I'm not thinking about them in that regard. We got other guys that are going to step up and, and are going to be better for the opportunity um, because I, I look at myself the same way. I mean, when I woke up two weeks ago, three weeks ago, wherever it was, I didn't know that I was going to be the interim coach and calling plays in this game. Didn't even think about that. But I am. And so I'm not worried about who's not here. I'm worried about the guys that are here uh, because that's what they want too because they deserve to be coached and, and we got to pour into those guys so they can be the best version of themselves. When was the, when was the last time you come up? Did a game plan and called plays in the game. I know you're involved in game plans. Yeah, but, I mean, but, but when, yeah. did, when, when were you last time you actually put one together and actually called one? Well, the short answer to that is I do that every week. Now, my ideas don't always, you know, as, <laughs> what I do is I go about this the same way I would if I was calling plays. That's just how you practice it as a coach. That's how I've done it. So every week I always have my own game plan for whatever opponent we're playing. And then I present my ideas. Some of them stick, some of them don't. That's just the nature of when you work as a collective. Um, so I do it every week to answer the question. Now, in terms of me being in that chair and being in charge and knowing that my, you know, that I was going to call it, uh, 2015 was my last year as an offensive coordinator at Norfolk State. Um, I assume as, as the head coach, you'll be on the sideline, not yeah, up on the box. For sure. Yeah. Who's 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 going to be up in the box? Uh, John Boyer will be up there, and then Tori Gill, who's been up there all year. Um, so those guys will stay up there. Okay. And, and John will go up there and kind of help me um, be my eyes up there. And, okay. Um, you, you know, he's a guy I trust, and he's called plays, and so the communication will be good. I think With, you mentioned this before, but you, you've been in the Sun Bowl Stadium before? Uh, 19 years ago, yeah, a long time ago. I don't remember much, to be honest. Which one was I, I was there 20, that, 20 I was there years uh, 20 years ago. When I was at Boise State, we played UTEP there. Oh, okay. So I was, I was just a regular game, yeah. What, what, do you what do you remember? Is there anything unique about that place? I just remember being really cool. I think it overlooked the mountains. If I'm remembering the press box, looked at the mountains. Uh, I feel like the stadium was built into a mountain, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Um, so it was, it, was, it was a cool venue. But there isn't any. I mean, some stadiums, uh, aren't there things you have to kind of prepare for a little bit? There's nothing that yeah, stuck out about it. I don't remember that. Um, not, not that in detail, no. Yeah, yeah. With Damien's day of shootout, uh, Deshaun and Isaiah available? Yeah, Hold absolutely. Yeah, okay. What is the uh, the mood of the team? What, all these ups and downs, emotionally, with everything that's happened the last three, four weeks, what does the team have? I think they're in a really good place. You know, um, honestly, I think there have been more ups than downs. Like, I again, I you know, I get the perception of this whole thing, but like, I just think when change happens, opportunity presents itself, and a lot of these guys are getting opportunities that they didn't get. Uh, we got a new staff in here. Coaches are in here now. Players are meeting these guys. I think they're excited about the, the newness to it. Um, I know this. I've been a coach. I've been on both sides. Of it. I've left and I've, I've come in. And players, are, they, they got short memories when it comes to coaching. Like, we feel like as coaches sometimes we, we impact these kids, and we do. But when they get new coaches, they, they kind of move on pretty quickly. Um, and so I, I, that's just what I see. I see guys diving into new coaches. Uh, I see guys that are looking to impress new coaches. Um, and so that's not a bad thing at all. It's just, it's just new, it's just different. So uh, I just think if you choose to look at it in a negative manner, this will be the worst thing that's ever happened to you in the history of life. But it's really not that. It's just new opportunities for everybody to grow and, and, and create new uh, mentors and mentees and you get a new group of guys to coach and your new coach coming in here. And, um, I've always saw it as a positive thing when change happens. Now, maybe that's just me, but. Do you feel like the team kind of needed a couple weeks just to kind of process everything that happened? Or do you feel like it was really that quick? I, maybe a couple days, I'd say. But I think just when you go through a season that we went through, well, I mean, the reality is we lost some really close games. Our season could, we could be playing in a playoff right now. And so that, to me, affected our team more so than anything. They needed to just take a deep breath from a long season. Um, to get ready for this bowl game. And, and the bowl game is going to be roughly a month or so outside of our last game. So I just think they needed some time off, finals, school. Um, there's a lot on these guys' plates. You know, they're not just playing football. And so I think naturally, the end of the year just naturally brings that. 
Now, with what happened, yeah, you probably got to take a couple days just to figure out what's going to happen. But once that happens, once you know who the head coach is, who the coordinator is, who your coach is going to be, I think that settles itself. So, What's one message or maybe motto or theme that you find yourself kind of stressing to these guys a lot the closer that the bowl game gets? I just think we got to define our season, define our football. Um, at the end of the day, what is this 23 team? What are people going to say about you? Um, because I think how you handle this – this game says a lot about you. Not so much win, winning it or losing it, but just how you go about it, how you prepare for it. Um, are you the same guy when stuff changes around you versus when everything is perfect around you? Because that's life. Like I, I keep telling these guys, like if this is the worst thing that happens to you in life, you are damn lucky. This is life. So how you embrace this thing is, is everything to me, how you, how you go about it. So that's been the message. Been pretty consistent that way. Is uh, Everett Hayes? Is he going to do yeah. all the kicking duty? Yep. How do you feel like he's just from a confidence standpoint? He isn't he hasn't kicked yeah. extra points or field goals in a while? Yeah, he's practiced, so I think he's excited for the opportunity. Um, you know, we kind of went with the hot hand during the, or hot foot during the season, um, and I think he kind of understood that, and so now he's ready. I mean, before Everett got hurt, he was our starting kicker. Um, so I think he's got confidence. The players have confidence in him. The coach has got confidence in him. So I, I expect him to go out there and be Everett. Coach, I'm just wondering, you've obviously been doing this for a long time. You already kind of spoke a little bit about how long you've been doing this. Not that, what are your, not that long. <laughs> for, for a while. <laughs> what are your kind of opinions on the level of competition in bowl games in recent years? Because 20 years ago, you know, with no NIL, no transfer portal, none of that, you know, you had a lot more starters in these games. It felt like, you know, you'd have – you know, the, the pieces that you see on television all going year in and year out on again, and now you have a lot of these backups, these people trying to show their opportunity. What's your opinion about the level of competition change in some of these bowl games? I think the level of competition is the same. I think at the end of the day, you're going to get 11 guys out there against 11 other guys that want to win the game. I think the competition is going to be good. Uh, is, does the face of the roster look a little different? Absolutely, for every team involved. And, and I'm not going to make an argument that it shouldn't be that way. I mean, if I'm one of these guys and I got a high draft grade, I, I get it. It makes sense to me. Um, so from that standpoint, I just think for me the biggest question is in five years, how relevant will bowls be with the playoff expanding? And, you know, that to me is the, the question I think college football has got to answer. What's your opinion on that? My opinion is that they should do a playoff like FCS. I'm a small college guy. We had a playoff in Division Three, Division Two, FCS. I like that. I just think that's sport. You don't know who's going, who the best team in the country is if you you got to get enough people playing to figure yeah. that out. The team with the best record, I'm not sure. I don't know that they win the Super Bowl every year, yeah. right? They don't win the NCAA tournament every year. Um, I think football is a little behind that way. And so I would be all about just a, a bigger tournament where you put teams in there and see, see what's up from there. If the Bulls want to sponsor them, if you want to have the first round of the playoff be the Sugar Bowl, so be it. Mm -hmm. Or you need to pay the players so that they play in these bowl games. Because I think if I'm in charge of a bowl and I want the best players to play in it, there's got to be some incentive for those guys to, to do that the way the world is today. Um, that's just my take on it. I'm not, you know, it is what it is. Curious, though. Yeah. That would be, you know, my short answer without studying it or having any real insight on it. That's a good answer. Hard to, hard to hate what you saw in Missoula on Saturday. That's awesome. Yeah. Super <laughs> fired up for those dudes. You're talking about a cool – that's my experience in college football. Like, I just think about what the playoffs means to that community and that stadium. They get home games. Like, that thing is, is an unbelievable atmosphere. And I couldn't imagine what this place would be like if you were in a playoff game and, and, and you had it here in Reeser. Um, I played at North Dakota State. You know, I, I just, it, it's pretty cool. It's a good deal. And we, you know, you watch the March Madness every year. Like, college football's losing out a little bit that way. But, Coach, yeah. regarding Damian, um, obviously the DA decided not to file charges. Scott Barnes lifts the suspension. Is that a coaching staff decision then to have him be questionable for this bowl game? No, it, it's just a matter of really him being able to play and be, be Damian. I just think when you sit out, again, like, Aside from what happened, again, I'm not, I don't know the, the other part of it. I'm just talking from a football standpoint. you got to be ready to play this game, especially at running back. Like, you're going to take 20 to 25 hits. you gotta be, you got to be in shape to do that. Uh, it's got to make sense for him to, to do that. Because, again, we're, again, we got a game, and I'm all about the Sun Bowl. But Damian's got a whole other season to play at Oregon State. Uh, we don't want to compromise that for one game. 
if that makes sense what I'm saying. I mean, so we got capable guys that are more than ready to, to take on the load that have been practicing the past couple weeks. Um, and so that, that's where it's at for Since, me. Did he come back from this break a little out of shape then? Or? I'm not saying that. I just know that he hasn't practiced in a good amount of time. Sure. Did so, he practice today? No. Where does that kind of final decision, I guess, come from? If, if Damien says, I, I want to play in this ball game, say, for example, would you guys allow him to, or would you guys, again, look more towards the future and say, hey, you're, you're not up to shape, we, we can't it's, let you It's play. our job to protect the players, um, and, and we do that every day. And so, um, you know, we'll cross that bridge when we get there, but the short answer is we're going to protect the players. Sometimes you got to protect the players from themselves because the one thing I know about real players – is that they always want to play, right? I get dinged up and it looks from the outside to man, you might have a little something wrong with you. you. You need to go over there. No, coach, I'm good. Well, what do you do? You just ignore and let the dude go out there and play when you have a concern? Like, I'm a father. I I'm never going to put anybody's kid at risk. Um, and so that's just how I look at it. So if it comes to that, I'm talking hypothetically any player, not Damian, but any player, if I feel like it's in their best interest to not play because of how I feel or what I see, and what I know from you just mentioning how long I've been doing this, then I'm going to always protect the player. You, you said Don't. he didn't practice today. Did he show up to the facility? Was he here ready to practice? Uh, Damien was in Texas. He was at home this past weekend. So um, There was a lot of players last year that got a little taste of what a, a bowl victory was like. I know the year before, they kind of came into last season with a little bit of vengeance because they didn't win that bowl game. But last year, they, they were able to play really, really well. Um, ended the season on, on a good note. Um, for those players that this is maybe their last time putting on the orange and black, just how much, um, you know, what it mean to them? And are they the ones that are kind of leading this team into, hey, let's finish the season the way that, you know, it deserves to be finished? Yeah, yeah. No, we've, we've been player-led. That's been kind of one of our mantras since, since we've been here. Um, and there are a lot of guys that have poured a lot into this program. Guys, you know, Jake Levengood, Jaden Robinson, Josiah Irish, Ray Manyagi, like guys that John McCartan. I'm just thinking about guys that got here when I got here six years ago. Um, and so, yeah, it is those guys' last game. And so it is important that they go out the right way, and we send them out the right way, and we help them go out the right way. Uh, and I think our players, the underclassmen, feel that way as well. Uh, and the other thing I just think that's good about bowls is it's kind of the, the you know, you kind of wrap up a season, but it almost springboards your next season. So our young guys kind of understand that too. Uh, and we had that last year in Las Vegas. We kind of were, we were able to ride that momentum into the off season, and I think that helped us get off to a good start this season. So we don't take that lightly. We kind of understand what that is and how that works. Um, and when you have success, it just, you want more of it. And I think our guys have had success, and that, that's the expectation of our program now. Um, maybe a couple years ago when we lost the Las Vegas Bowl or the uh, L.A. Bowl, it was cool that we got to a bowl. But that's not the standard anymore. The standard is to go to a bowl and win it. And so um, that's, that's where we're at. Is, is Damien coming back here at Corvallis this week, or is he meeting you up? In, in I'm, I'm not time? sure, to be honest. I, I expected him to come back, but I'm not 100% I'm not sure. Um, that's probably above my pay grade in terms of where, what his – This is starting to sound like he's not going to. Yeah, I would tell you today, as I stand here today, he won't play. Um, but that's just how I feel, just based on me knowing what you got to do to get ready to play a football game. Yeah. I think it'd be uh, a quick turnaround for him. And uh, personally, I don't think it's worth it. Yeah. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate it, man.